Yeah. Well, thank you so much and a very good morning. Welcome to UBC TV. It is good morning. You're going to extra today again. My name is Jagenda Semakola Zikusoka. And of course, with me in studios is uh, Mr. Julius Mukunda, the ED of uh, the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group. Now, it is uh, sixth today of uh, this month of uh, July, and tomorrow is uh, State of the Nation Address. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, uh, will be speaking to the nation and, of course, opening the second session of uh, the 11th uh, Parliament. Um, uh, that will be tomorrow at um, Kololo, and, of course, next week on Tuesday. At such a time, we'll be also getting our budget for the financial year 2022-2023. And with me in studios is um, um, one of Uganda's budget experts. You're very welcome, Mr. Mukunda. Happy to have you again. Thank you. Good it's morning. Very, good morning, you guys. Thank you so much. Happy, yeah. to, happy to have you today. And um, if, of course, on another very um, a lovely day. Mm. Um, according to uh, the Minister of Health, Dr. Janotha Cheng Ochero, um, mm. uh, COVID is again spiking. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's coming back, and we need to take personal responsibility. Did you vaccinate? Yes, 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 yes. Both? Yes. Both. Fully I'm vaccinated. Good, fully vaccinated. You're good yes. to go. I'm good to go. Okay. And I Th encourage everybody to do that. That's why we're actually putting on masks. Oh, um, yeah. Some other people would say, why put on a mask now mm. and, and why put on a mask at this time? We're putting on masks because we're told um, the cases are again uh, oh, back and, and it should be personal responsibility now. Mm. Let's get into the budget. Um, it's instead of the national address tomorrow, and of mm. course, um, what we expect to hear from the president <coughs> is that uh, he's going to give us um, how we've performed uh, mm. the state of affairs, actually, mm. uh, from um, where when we got the budget last mm. year uh, to uh, tomorrow, where mm. we shall um, again be uh, crowning the mm. uh, financial year. Yes. Um, just before we get into what is ahead of us, how do you think we've actually performed? Uh, I, I think for, I mean, the, the last two years really have been very difficult, mm. both for the economy and for its people. But uh, again, I think when you compare yourself with, 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 with others, then you are likely to say, okay, I think we are doing much better than, than the rest of the people. Mm. But the, I think the biggest element, what probably the president is having in his mind is how to communicate this particular message mm. of uh, saying, okay, good, uh, this is how we performed. <coughs> and, and I think in terms of, uh, uh, if you look at... Uh, in terms of the budget, of course, uh, we, we are still running on a 44 trillion the budget that we had that mm -hmm. we are that is ending at the end of and at the end of June. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, economy, of course, the effects of COVID, and I was telling people that uh, COVID effects actually are starting to come now, not not last time. You know, it's uh, it's like in the household when you have a problem and you you, you go to rely on your granary. Mm -hmm. Until the granary is finished, mm. is when now you begin to see the, uh, the, the ugly eye. The, of the that granary question. is finished and there is nothing in the garden. And there is nothing in the garden. Mm. That is the problem. Mm. But coupled with that, of course, is the, the, the Ukrainian war that has come up. Okay. And, uh, and it is a warrior where we have no role to play. Mm. We only play that these guys can stop fighting and then we can be able to get uh, some fuel mm. and also some wheat and, uh, and, and the rest of the work. Mm. Because... Right now, the inflation we are being told that by last week to that at, at uh, it had reached at six point three percent. So you are beginning to get worried and say, okay, where is it likely to end? Mm. And you saw also the bank of Uganda, central bank, also increasing its CBR rate, mm. the, the interest, the central yes, bank, yes. The, the central bank, the central bank rate. Mm. And those are not good news. Those are not good news. Mm. You, 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 you want the interest rates to be low so that it can be able to influence the interest rates in the banks, our commercial banks. Mm. And once the interest rates in the commercial bank are also low, then our businessmen can, and women can be able to get to the banks, borrow money, and start, and start, and start, and start business. Mm. But when they are high, it means that you are informing the commercial banks, mm. please uh, go through on your lending, mm. on, your, on, on your lending money. And once that is done, and, and you see, Uganda, it's, it's, it's a bit different. Usually is. When the central bank has reduced its, its uh, CBR, you want this, the other banks to follow suit, but they fall very slow. But the moment it increases, they increase very fast. Mm. We, 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 we don't know why they do that. So that is an area I think the president really is going to have uh, to, to communicate to us and tell us that uh, the ease of doing business in the country, the cost of doing business in the country must remain, uh, must, must remain very low and must remain very easy for us to be able to, to, to run because no businesses, I can tell you, no business runs without a credit, mm -hmm. without borrowing money, so that you can be able to, to increase your production. The, the good news is 
we've been able to produce our own food. Mm. And, and I think for me that's why you find that even the effects of COVID have not hit us so much because Uganda were able to produce our own food. Our biggest challenge, I think, is the market. So um, I want to see how, in terms of marketing, how we can be able to, to work out the market, the, the market business. Mm. Because why is it that right now I'm being told that in Churuhura milk is at, the, at its lowest, mm. around 1,800 per liter. And then I'm like, oh, why, 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 how could that happen? Mm. So how could you be able to ensure that uh, the markets, both, in, both internal here mm. and also outside, we're able to capture that? Mm. I'm very happy that I saw the, for the first time the okay. DRC Uganda mm. Business Summit. Mm. For the first time? For the first time, I'm like, okay, mm. for the f it is, I think, mm. I think I congratulate Anite. Because mm. really for me is, we can't go there, pacify the country. Mm. Then we come back and sleep. Build, build their roads, and then mm. we come back and, and sleep. They leave it for somebody else. And somebody else goes yeah. and begins to enjoy. Mm. And I think, yeah, I think it was a really, very, very good thing that we can be able to take, take okay. our business okay. you know, and do that. Okay, G Julius, um, you, you know, here is where we are today. And, and of course, um, you, you know, when we plan for budgets, whenever we, we uh, do budgets and, and do all these uh, plans, mm. um, it, it, it's, we, we are progressive. Uh, mm. just like we are um, uh, living a life mm. whether you've gone to school this year or not you you are aging whether you've built a house or not you were 40 the other year you're 40 this year <laughs> whether you've uh, had a child or not you you grow <laughs> the life has to mm. uh, continue similar to uh, the budgets in here but but uh, two years ago when we're just getting into 2020 series now mm. we, we had floods we had um, uh, the, the water rising levels with the locusts we had all the things and of course COVID came in and shut down almost everything now we're trying to uh, um, uh, jump out of COVID. Uh, now we have the war in Ukraine and, and etc. Given all the things, and of course, we as Ugandans keep talking about and we take pride in um, having enough food and producing enough food. But, but here is where we are today, that even when we have the food, we are having issues and problems of actually even being able to afford the food itself that we're talking about. Now, the time now is not the time as it was <laughs> during COVID time. Because during COVID, there was a lot of food for everybody that you could even give your food on, on credit. It, it's a little different now that um, you, you must really have the money, you must reach out your pockets to get this food and to get all these things. What are we learning as economists and leaders, as um, uh, politicians, as uh, societal managers of this country? What are we doing? What are we learning from all these events uh, to be able uh, to actually uh, go forward? I, I, I think for me is there's something we have not learned in this country. Maybe that is also another learning that we are not learning in this country. What we are not learning in this country is that Ugandans can actually work on their own if given the right environment. Mm. <coughs> and, and I have seen this. I, I was in a Padir one time, I think f six years ago, and you, Cotton Development Authority had brought a new program. Mm. Produce cotton, we will buy it at this price. The first season, very few people did it. Mm. And Cotton Development Authority immediately bought all the cotton that they had promised people to buy. Mm. The second season, every person <coughs> in the Padere district started growing cotton. Mm. And Cotton Development Authority bought the cotton. The neighboring districts also started in the third season. Now, Cotton Development Authority was overwhelmed, and they only bought half. The fifth season, nobody bought, nobody planted cotton. What does it tell you? Mm -hmm. It tells you that if you provide the market for anything, even if, are, even if it is just growing, even if it is just putting together stones, Uganda is able to do that. So our problem is marketing, period. Let nobody deceive you that we have a problem with extension, we have a problem with the acaricides. Farmers will look for the right acaricides, mm -hmm. we look for the right extension officers. We, even you now again, you will go back to the village and start growing what is on the market. Mm. So our biggest challenge right now, I think, is for me to see government putting a lot of interest in looking for markets mm. for our products. Mm. We should not be suffering because Kenya has refused to take, to take our, our poultry. Mm. Why? Why do we want to rely on Kenya? Why? And we know for the last 10 years, they have been giving us headaches. Mm. We know Tanzania every time. They, because we are running the same economies, mm. we are running the same economies. Mm. They have their diary, we have our diary. Sitting there milk is, means that we have to sit at a cheaper price than, 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 than them. And they are distorting mm. their market. The only thing we can be able to get out of this quagmire 
is for us to, to give the, the number one key performing uh, indicator for any ambassador of Uganda should be how much money, how many exports, how many crops, how many products are you selling on behalf of Uganda. Mm -hmm. And that must be Ugandan products. Mm -hmm. We know Nigeria wants milk, Nigeria wants poultry, Nigeria wants uh, oranges. They actually import them from Brazil. Mm. So, if you are an ambassador in Nigeria, mm. why can't our government really help you mm. establish markets? Mm. We have the best pineapples in the whole world. They will tell you that. Mm. And they will take our pineapples to Nigeria, our pineapples to Japan. But the Japanese will tell you, I want a squared watermelon. Squared? Squared watermelon. Yes, it's because for them, and I, don't, I only want one of a half kilogram. You know, watermelon can weigh almost five kilograms. Mm. Help our farmers to produce that, because that's what the market wants. It's not that every watermelon is going to be sold. So I, I think for me, we are missing that as the mm. very big uh, ingredient mm. to lift the 36, 39 percent of our population mm. that is still in subsistence farming, mm. that can uplift the 8.3 million people <coughs> who are still in the poverty. Mm. That is our game changer. Mm. And, I, and I want it to be seen, to, 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 to be done like that. So that's one key learning mm. that we have not learned. Mm -hmm. The second item is allocations. And now I think we are in what we call distortion in allocating priorities. Well, I, I thought we had moved now to that. We, we had planned that now that we, we, we do, we, we used to, what, what do you call it, sector, sector planning? Or and, uh, we are planning? in a sector, we are in a program. Mm, program we, we've shifted to that, mm. to say that if this child has to finish successfully, uh, a primary school, for example, mm. he must be, or she must be immunized, isn't it? Mm. There must be wash facilities in that school. That the parents must be, well educated enough mm -hmm. and aware that it is important to take both a boy to, and a girl to, to appreciate, to appreciate yeah. the importance of education. Mm -hmm. That the road to, to, to that primary school is clear, is mm -hmm. cut. That, mm -hmm. that's, commu that, 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 that's community access roads. Mm -hmm. So it meant that it's just not about bringing a teacher and building a school and you think kids will go to school and learn. No. That that school also must eat properly, nutrition. So that's what they call program approach to budgeting. Mm -hmm. That health water ministry of gender social development and education ministry you must sit together and plan and plan for this kid to finish school and that is a very big achievement mm. everybody of course is fighting it because people are there the, there were small uh, governments uh, people are fighting that oh seriously mm. because the small government it is my mandate it is my mandate it is my mandate you are still you are all taking this kid to school mm. and you think a, a kid is going. A kid going to school is, is for education. Be, because because it. in this school there must be electricity. In this school there must be sanitation. In this school there must be water. In this you school must there deliver must be, as one there for this kid. In this school, mm. so imagine there has to be a. a, 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 a you you a, imagine this kid. You take you build a school, put scholastic materials. Everything is there, but the kid is not immunized. Two to three are down the road. They get polio. Are they going to school? Two, three, four, five years down the road, the parents are not going to take the kid to school. You will still remain with the buildings. Mm. And that's what we are suffering. Even with the health centers. You build the health center, you forget that it must be connected to water. So you, would, you do not consult the Ministry of Water and Environment mm. to make sure that there is a line, a water line that goes to that particular health center. Mm. A theater will never work without water, for example. Mm. So you can buy <coughs> the best equipment, put them there. If there is no tap of water, they will lock it up until they get it and we know it is happening in some in some some places so that mind up that program approach is key and important uh, and important to our country but i think what what is missing are those distortions in allocations mm. at this particular moment where would you be putting most of your resources that's that's something i think where and i think we're having a you i think we're having a conversation what is the best thing that we are doing mm. what what do we have what what, what you what can't touch region? it mm. we, we are almost best in everything mm. and probably when you say everything probably mm. there is nothing exactly because there are countries that will tell you this yes. country market is this, this country yes um, they, their leverages on this particular yes. what we have as uganda so we, we keep talking about watermelon we talk about pineapples we talk about oranges we talk exactly. about each other thing now when we talk about the parish development model uh, we, we got those commodities mm -hmm. and and 
and and I think for me there are even too many. Exactly, the there game are too many. many. Everybody wants there are too their, many. They are over Kedo. Everybody wants their own thing. Every village wants their own exactly. thing. Virtually everything that is in this country has become. Uh, so, so, so where are we? You, you, the planners help us in the government. I, I think. I mean, we have we have coffee. We pride ourselves to coffee. So everybody says coffee, 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 coffee. But um, my friend, not everybody is growing coffee in this country, and. Uh, people, I, I, I know a, a friend of mine in the village who says, me, me, I can't go for coffee. I say, why? Because when I don't have money to buy food, I can't eat coffee. Mm -hmm. I, rather, I rather engage myself in beans, peas, millet, because when things go bad, I go and I pick I, I go, <laughs> I go a cup of beans and mm. can cook it for children to eat. So I, I, I think we need to identify what we are good at. If it is pineapples, if it is beans, if it is maize, if it is wheat, if it, we need to identify those core things that we are very good at and go ahead and seriously implement. It doesn't matter we should leave others, but we must give a priority. And uh, a one, there is one for who is saying that we must have a sector that we are investing in heavily for a particular period of time. Mm. And I have said it in this studio that there are things we want to do mm. what others are doing, which is okay. Like dealing in technology, for example, you know, building of, of cars and buses, and it, it is okay, it is fine. But the thing is, where we have a very huge advantage from other countries, and other countries want us to do that, mm. and that is agriculture. For example, we would say that in the next five years, the first call on our budget and the biggest spender on our budget is going to be in agriculture. And we go in full blast, like how we have done it with infrastructure. Because for the last 10 years, mm. for we've heaven's roads, sake, yeah. we've, we've, done we've built roads. Mm. And, and, there, is, is very and well there is something we can show about yeah. the roads, isn't it? Mm. We, we have challenges, but there is something we can show about roads for the last five years. If you, you, you know, I mean, it would take you a day and a half from which sort of here. It takes you half a day. Mm. It would take you uh, from here to Entebbe Airport, mm. you remember. It would even take you more than an hour to reach Entebbe Airport. Mm. It now takes you 20 to 30 minutes to reach mm. the airport. Mm. And that is movement of goods and people means that also the cost of doing business also improves. Increasing. So Increasing. we've done what we have done in, in, on, 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 on uh, infrastructure. infrastructure. Even including energy. I think we have also done that. The, the, the biggest challenge, I think, in energy is that we did not complete the whole project cycle. Mm. And that's what I was telling in terms of allocation distortions. Mm. You start building a dam, and you think once you build the dam and finish it, mm. then electricity has come. You have the electricity, it is not distributed, <laughs> it is not transmitted. So it is generated <laughs> and kept there. You've generated it, it mm. has stayed there, and mm. the person who has generated electricity begins demanding money from you because mm. the contract you signed was that to please generate this amount of electricity, Which I will doing? pay you. Which they are doing? The guy is doing it, but mm. that electricity is still at the dam. At the dam. Mm. You forgot that you needed also to plan and transmit it. Mm. Not only that, mm. but distribute it to the last mm. consumer, to your house. Mm. And once it is not in your house, even if you transmit it, mm. then you are not consuming it, then it has no purpose. It has no value. So we could fix those ones. But I think it is important that as a government, as Uganda, the way we are, when you look at this parish development model, call me next year at the same time, 90% of the money people are going to get will be in agriculture. Period will be in agriculture. Very few people will go for brick laying, will go for carpentry, will go for fabrication of metals. 90% of the people that will get parish development model money. Agriculture. Will go to plant tomatoes, maize, matoke, poultry, pigarine, poultry. Et That's where they are going to, because that's what they know. That's where they are comfortable in. Mm. Therefore, if that is in the mindset of every Ugandan, of the majority of Ugandans, mm. I would have liable to see government right now putting more emphasis, one, on ensuring that there is no counterfeit products, agricultural products, on the market. For example, that if we get you selling fake inputs, let us take you and let us show you to Ruzira. Actually, I would have liable to see that government put so much money to build a very big prison. Hey. To those kind of people. Those are the people holding us to grow. I can tell you the truth. <laughs> Personally, I have experience. Mm. I went 
I love roots to put to plant a mango tree in my in my compound. The person told me this mango tree in six months, six to eight months. You start harvesting. You start harvesting, and they will bring so uh, huge the, mangoes. The, the huge mango, uh, each uh, half a kilogram. Yeah. Mm. They, they have that very good rhetoric. I said, ah, oh. I started it. Mm. I put it there six months, and the thing is not even growing up. I took care of it, gave it all the fertilizers, whatever it meant to give it. <laughs> two years down the road, the thing is not even uh, two meters. Now, now it, it, it even grew, became a huge tree that now to, you have to climb to pick a mango that is there. And the first bunch that came were gogoa, the smaller ones. So if you are a farmer, you've cleared 10 acres to plant mangoes in six months. You've got a loan from a commercial bank. Mm. They have agreed to give you a, a grace period of one year. Mm. Two years down the road, there is no mango coming. Mm. Why can't we really hang that, that kind of a person? Throw you in a very big jail <laughs> and you stay there forever. <laughs> this is what's happening to each and every farmer in this country. <laughs> Julius Anise. So, if you want the Polish model to work, let yes. me tell you, that's how strictly you can be. Yes. We find you selling fake inputs that actually I would have loved to see money allocated for building a very big hospital to support my, our, our friend, uh, the Commissioner General of Prison. Mm. He's got to do his job. Particularly for that, because if we don't do that, we won't come back here and start lamenting about the partition. How right? is our budget? The 2022-2023 budget? Because I think that's where we are. That's where we're going. And uh, like we've always talked about this, um, we, we, we call these budgets pro people. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, we again discuss and talk about our priorities. Mm. Now we're going to hear the same same things. Um, so much has gone into the Ministry of Works. So much has gone into security. So much has gone into health. So much has gone into all that. Now, even those in health, um, health clients, health providers, health consumers, and whatever uh, uh, they, they want to look at how much salary is actually getting because we're going to get a budget um, a few days after uh, we've <laughs> had um, a series of uh, strikes from uh, um, different workers and what we look at here is um, how about our salaries when the president was reading to us the budget for the state of the nation address last year he hinted about uh, the salaries for uh, scientists mm -hmm. and he said i think it should go to i think four million for 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 regular scientists then to, to the researchers i think it goes to 15 million shillings like they are uh, given in universities we had all these things and and one year later of course these people have not received their money i'm sure that's why they're striking and doing all the things too uh, we're getting back there again uh, and, and, and so with all this uh, so much we have a budget of um, about 48 trillion next year to possibly 60 trillion <laughs> earlier, it will be anything but the effect of it to the public to the public and the population <laughs> <Pay more. laughs> hmm? you, you, you know i mean it's i mean it has increased it, it was the, the one that is ending was 44, 44 trillion mm. now we are on 48.1 uh here is the catch. We are not increasing any taxes. We are not introducing new taxes. Mm. And uh, this was in the spirit of recovery. Mm. If you are out of the hospital, definitely you won't expect to start running. Mm. You, you recover properly and then you can be able to produce. And, and I, think, I think that's a very good signal on the part of government. No, no new taxes. And no other, the other sinful taxes like mobile money. Mm. No, no, no. The OTTs and OTT. like that. Mm. We're not being surprised. I think that's a very, very good move. Let, 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 let's get to do that. But so where will the money going to come from? Mm. That means we're going to borrow it. Uh, I think there's something exciting in the budget, which I'm really looking forward to here. And, and that's the parish development model. And, and, and for me, is uh, Jag and really between me and you is that uh, for the first time in this country since independence, a Ugandan is going to share directly from the national resource. For the first time? For the first time. And will they share? Directly. Mm. Directly. People mm. will say, oh, there are other programs, and, and well, microfinance, those ones. But for directly, that you have a group of people seated in a village, receiving 200 million shillings, and beginning to plan how to spend it. Direct I from the national coffers? Directly from the national coffers. People determining their own destiny. That is, that is empowering. Mm. And when I hear stories, the stories are so diverse. And that also shows the strength of this country. In my village, people are saying, find very much. For us, we grow a lot of matoke, we want marketing. They will hire a truck, bring, bring Matoke to Kampara. Because Matoke in my village 
a bunch is 1000 in kampara 30 40 so they will get one of their of their boys give him a truck go to kampara said bring back our money perfect you hear people from uh, from the north i mean they say oh do you know what i think beekeeping mm. i think uh, this uh, gene at pest mm. is our thing internally here we don't have the right machinery to do this so we're going to buy the right machinery mm. increase on the quality mm. and start exporting mm. that is empowering and that's what they call local economic development so you won't tell everybody please plant more ground nuts mm. plant more sim -sim, mm. because we've got the right machine to do that mm. i'm looking forward the outcome of this particular Shall we manage to do it this time around, Julius? Because um, about 20 years ago, in 1998, we got a very big fund from uh, IFAD to do what they call the Vegetable Oils Development Project here, yeah, the VODP. And then we had one and I think two. That, that's a project that we took to Kalangara, mm. for Ibinazi, and uh, to Vuma. Then we zoned the country and, 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 and saw that um, northern Uganda, the northern region, we can have all oil, these um, oil seeds, oil, oil seeds. Yeah. all the oil seeds and and today we are here we are discussing Ruto cooking oil <laughs> eh? but but 20 years ago we planned and said this should be here and mm. this should be there and then mm. put in a lot of money uh, how, how do we even convince our people julius that um we still have the will to do all the things even when we do the planning and and tell the people and and we are the same people. We are the same people who have yes. been implementing the VODP. Mm. We are the same people who have been planning for all these things. Mm. We are still the same people mm. who are actually planning and doing and going to implement uh, the parish development model. How do we convince the people or how do we even convince ourselves this time around that yes, we will do the right things today? today? I want to look at it in two ways. Mm. Had we not planned, where would we be? I, I, I think we also need to, also, as you can think about, let's say we had not planned for, for Karangar. We where would we be? Where I think mm. we would be in a very, very bad situation. A very bad situation. If there's no plan for Kalanga. If we, we did plan, we can say thank you very much. We achieved 50 percent. I think that's 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 something we should be proud of. That we really planned, but we can do better. And and that's why I was saying that mm. this business of people in the government sleeping on their jobs, and then we keep on rewarding them. It's very dangerous for us. Mm -hmm. We are being kept in poverty simply because somebody is sleeping on the job. Because if Karangara and Vuma really worked the way they are, yeah, mm -hmm. why couldn't we successfully plan the similar one in northern Uganda where we know the weather is perfect and the weather is fine? Why couldn't we do that properly? Somebody is sleeping on the job. And that is my problem. When I see accounting officers, really, you are running a project, it is money from government from it is a loan of three years four years five years down the road you've been applying for an extension every year and you are 10 plus percent performance and you are still an accounting officer no way such a person once you have not performed please leave the place they should be kicked out bring somebody else like what we're talking about in football get somebody else to to help us move forward mm. and i think one of the biggest reforms we need to do in this country is how to fire civil servants. Mm. You can't fire a teacher, let me tell you. In this country? You can never fire a teacher in this country. Mm. The best they can do is to transfer the incompetence from one school to another. Mm. But to fire him from the payroll, forget about it. You cannot. I think the biggest reform we need to do in this country is to put a clause on how to fire people. And, and, struck and, them and, and for me, is the first thing is everybody should be on a contract, period. In this country? This business of pensionable and the permanent and pensionable pa permanent and pension should be thrown into the... We, modern countries no longer do those things. Because technologies are improving, environment is changing, you need people, new people to adapt to do new things. It doesn't mean that if you are a veteran, you are just, no, if you are performing, it's not about being a veteran, if you are performing to your job. But year in, year out, the auditor general comes and says, this department, you give it a qualified audit. You give it four years down the road, and you, you are still an accounting officer, mm. wasting government money. So I think that's a fundamental challenge the president must address. Mm. If you are not performing, please step aside. Let us move because we are poor, not because we don't have the knowledge, not because we don't have money, not because we lack the ideas. We are just being kept in poverty because somebody is sleeping on the job. Mm. If you are given a 
a project. The other John tells us that 40% of our projects are on time. 40% on time. It means that you are likely to complete it on time. Mm. Only 40. Mm. The rest are not. What mm. does that tell you if you're an accounting officer? If, 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 if you're building 10 roads, you can only manage 4 roads on time. Yeah, so only 4 roads will, be, will finish on time. What the rest the 6 roads? Are over time, above the cost, will mm. never get finished. And you have Busiga, Busiga Big Express. Mm. It was commissioned 6 years ago. You can't even calculate that the equipment has been finished. Are you sure? Yes, go there. The northern bypass was supposed to have completed in five years. It took 20 years to finish it. I was comparing it with the Uganda Railways from Chisumu to... <laughs> from, from Mombasa to here. Hmm. So, really, if you are an accounting officer... I, and, and you see, a classic example is... You want to build a project and you have no visibility study. That's number one. You, when you have no visibility study, it means that you are like a ship without a compass. You're just building without a compass. Because once you reach there, you'll find out that there is a, 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 there is a river. So you didn't plan to put a bridge. So you go back and say, by the way, we need a bridge there. So mm. you change the contract. Mm. Then the contract a bit goes up. So I, I think it's quite a very important that we want to see more of these reforms happening. I'm glad I'm seeing Minister of Finance trying to put together some of this, especially in PIM, mm. uh, uh, public investment management reforms, whereby you have an integrated bank project, whereby project can be picked that are already ready. Mm. But the problem is that uh, then you hear a new project has come from somewhere and it is already, already, in, already in the budget. So, I'm re that's one exciting example of the partnership development I was telling you. And the, the, the other element, I think, is for the first time we are seeing human capital development, that is health and education, mm. getting the second biggest share. The, the, second, the, the second biggest share of the, of, uh, of the budget. No, After actually the, the first. Mm. It is the first, 18.1%. It is the first, followed by security and, 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 uh, and, and, the, and governance. And I think we need to build capacities of our, 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 our Ugandans mm. to be able to deliver. Let us have the right education. Let us ensure that everybody is immunized. Let us ensure that medicines are in, are, are in hospital. Let us ensure that... Uh, I, I usually underrated the mindset change. And until I saw what people were talking about during COVID, mm. that you're not going to get immunized. And people really opposed to get immunized at all. <coughs> and, and people have their own arguments anyway. And it, it really told me that okay, if somebody is arguing on this on COVID, what about the mindset change on business, how to do business, for example? What about the mindset change on ensuring that everybody goes to school, for example? And I, I realize that we really, really <laughs> need mm. to educate our population mm. on and appreciate what the development entails. Mm. That you don't need to have jiggers and you think you have been bewitched mm. because you have jiggers. Mm. I mean, you, you sleep with your dogs and your cats and your, yes. your pigs and everything in the same house. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the same house. Mm. And then, so, so it can't be witchcraft. So, and then for you, you say it is witchcraft. So you, mm. you go to the witch person. I don't mm. know. Or to a pastor to be prayed for. Oh, a, yes, or ex for exactly. So to be delivered. And, 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 and these things happen in the Ghana in, in, in 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 society. So I, I think it's, it's important that we invest a lot in mindset change. Mm. Except what are we teaching? What kind of information are we also delivering? I think it's, it's quite a very, 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 very important that we have a national curriculum about mindset change on how people should be able to appreciate that development and how they can take advantage of it. Mm. Because it's one thing to bring the benefits of budget across the people, and it's the other people to agree and uptake them. Mm. I can give you an example is, you, you go Masaka, you know, Kampara Masaka Mbara Road and see how many beautiful roadside markets have been built but are not occupied. Mm. And then there is a makeshift market. Mm. Date, filthy, poor hygiene. It has everybody there. It's congested. Everybody is there. Mm. And you ask, why are uh, a government? But it's your money mm. as a taxpayer. Because you consumed the salt, you consumed the sugar, you bought things in the shop, you paid VAT indirectly in for that market to be built for you. And people don't want to use it. So it, it don't mean that actually, our biggest problem in this country is also about mindset change, how to do business. Mm. You don't go to the bank, for example, to borrow money with the purpose of not paying back. Mm. 
it, it takes to say, please, you have a tool. Mm. No, no people get money from money lenders and, and they pray for them to die. You, you <laughs> want to hear that the person who gave you money has actually died. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm impressed <laughs> that you can agree with me in terms of the importance mm. of mindset exchange in mm -hmm. this country. If we can't do that, we are not going to take advantages of the benefits that come with the budget. Mm. Of course, this budget is coming with its own challenges and problems. Okay. I, I, I want to talk earlier here the challenges of the budget that we have in yes. the coming budget. I, I think the, the mm. biggest challenge, of course, is corruption. Uh, and, and, and I think we need to get head on. Mm. And, and I have said it time and again that in this country, you see, everything evolves. Everything becomes sophisticated. Mm. Uh, it's no longer about you picking money and run away. You, need to, you, 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 you plan. Is it a planning period, a plan for corruption? Is it uh, time for budgeting? Budget, budget for, for it. Mm. Is it plan for appropriation at parliamentary level? Make budget sure it is appropriated. Mm. Is it time for execution? Make sure it is executed, your corruption is executed. Mm. Is it time for auditing? Make sure it is also audited properly. Mm. So at the end of the day, that is a very huge leakage that mm. goes unnoticed because mm. it has been planned so perfectly and so well. So for example, if this pen is costing 1,000 Ugandan shillings, mm. and for me at the planning stage, I have put 10,000 Ugandan shillings. At the planning stage? At the planning stage. Mm. So it means that if I need 10 pens of this, mm. I need 100,000. Mm. But instead of 10,000. Mm. So at the budgeting, I put 100,000. When you go to Parliament, I, I need 10 pens, it's 100,000. Parliament appropriates and gives a tick. At execution, remember I had my 100,000 to buy 10 pens. You go ahead and buy your 10 pens at 100,000 because I know the company that is going to supply these 10 pens at this particular amount of money. And maybe I become a bit sophisticated. I say, you know, this pen writes very smoothly, mm. the ink is well, the, you know, and it's, it's, it's this color, so it, it goes through. When the auditor comes, the, what will he do? You planned for it. You budgeted. Mm. It was appropriate. They'll see it in the plans. They'll see it in everything. And then the auditor will also give it a tick. You walk home with your 90,000 as, as corrupt money. So that is the huge hole in this particular budget. I'm mm. talking about pens. We're going to talk about vehicles. 6 to 7% of this budget is about procurement. Uh, as I feel like coming to procurement, because I think um, one of the things that um, um, even the European Union is grappling with is, is procurement. Um, they, they may not have um, the obvious corruption like we do have it, but they are also struggling with corruption in their procurement systems. Uh, and, and I think that's where it goes, because everything that you talk about here, uh, you, you will say this is a government entity and we just need to buy a smartphone. You, you can't just walk out of here and go to uh, any Samsung shop or any uh, um, um, shop around here and, and say, give us a phone for how much? One million, then you walk out as if you're taking it to your girlfriend or your mm. wife or your, uh, your mother's a gift. The, the procurement processes, uh, you know, you know uh, and all the things, uh, you get to getting another budget when there, there are so much things that you've not done. And, and of course, with the procurement itself, how much is into procurement and how does it even help us and what we need to do? Mm. Because I will tell you, um, procurement also helps us with the bureaucracies and to fight corruption in a way, which I think is true. I, but, but I think it's also another avenue again. Of that course, costs of us. course. They, yeah, yes. <laughs> to buy a pen in the government can take you six months. Just a pen. So imagine if you want to procure a very complex project like a dam how long it was going to take you. I mean, it will take you a million years to, to be able to complete that one. And I think one of the reforms that is very exciting that has come up is, is a, what, a, a, a electronic uh, government procurement portal. The EG portal. The, the EG the, portal. Mm, mm, EG government portal. I think that is going to solve 50% of our problem. Mm. Why? Because now we know who has applied, who has bidded. Because we didn't know them previously. It is going to be public. We know what the committee has decided on the bidding process. We know who, they are, who has won the bid and for what reason. We know we who has know put in what. We, we know, know what you have put in mm. and how much you are going to get. Mm. That we know. So that op makes a, the procurement process more transparent. And the bit with the, even the EGP is that it is owned by Uganda. You, you might say, what is your problem with that one? The problem with that one is if this portal, if this was, was Procured outside, there was not built here in Uganda. It would mean that on an annual basis you pay license fees. Mm. 
Mm. And if you're not, yeah, mm. and it is very damn expensive for all these softwares that we have procured uh, externally. So we have our source code here, so we can always manipulate and improve it the way we want it. And that uh, that was the best part mm. also. So the production process is going to be more transparent, mm. and. We, we were able to know if they gave you to construct that road for only two years, three years down the road, what is your problem? Mm. You, you said you do it in 18 months? In 18 months. Mm. So what is your problem? Mm. Uh, we, we know who you, who is this person who has won a, ro a road? Mm. Is he, do we know them? Uh, who is he exactly? So that at least we know there was no, there were no kickbacks so that a company belongs to a government official, a minister, a, you know, those, 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 those kind of things. Mm. So. It's a very good thing. 50% of our problems are, are really going to be, uh, to, to, to be solved. But I think we need a price list for the government of Uganda mm. and the standard of what we want. Mm. What type of pen do we want in this country to use? Mm. Of course, there are so many other pens, but as a government of Uganda, mm. this is the kind of pen we want. Like how public service says, this is the kind of vehicle you should buy, although I don't know who enforces that because now, you see one driving a Mercedes-Benz, another one is driving a Kia. A Kia another another is driving. Yes, actually. I, I'm also surprised that you now see cars and say, and oh, we have a this, used, order. this used not to be government vehicles. Yes, we have yes, a standing order. It, it, it has a government service, number plate. Uh, and I think our friend, Honorable uh, Murira, really should come up and help us on these things. Because everybody is driving anything and everything. And this costs money. Yes, that's that's the, so mm. as a government of Uganda, you want to come up and say, for is, us is, as a government... Is there a standard price for a car, for example? And, and say maybe a government is, car should be, uh, it should be 300 million shillings, for example. There must be, a, there is a standard for, 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 for vehicles. I, 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 we need to check that. But I know mm. there is a standard for vehicles, but it is not being enforced. Mm. Because they are now different cars. They are now they different are, cars. Mm, it's so fashion now. You need to say, as a government of Uganda, we will buy a RAV4, for example. And the Rav Fuba will buy a car of these specifications, one, two, three, four. And for this particular financial year, the vehicle should not be more than 300 million. The Rav Fuba that you want to buy? The Rav Fuba that you want to buy. Mm. You might not actually not say Rav Fuba, but mm. you can say, we want a 2,000 CC car, mm. a four-seater, mm. it takes diesel or fuel, mm. it must be manual. Four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive, mm. and, and you put it there. Mm. Whoever wants to buy, if you want to buy a Kia, let it be have those specifications, but the price must not be more than, than this mm. because you see, it might have the same specifications, but the price arranges. Mm. I mean, a Mercedes Benz, a 2000 CC Mercedes Benz, and the RAV4 2000 CC Mercedes, I mean, the prices mm. could be different. Mm. So, you, you do that and cap the price so that everybody falls below that particular price. But if you leave it open, let me tell you that that's why you find you go in a budget, you find that. There is a budget of a vehicle of 1.2 billion. You are do, do we have those cars in this country? Yes, those cars are there. You a a see, vehicle or you're talking about a, a, a Mamba? No, you are going mm. to see a 1.2 billion car on the road soon, very soon. You're going you're not, to see you're, you're not talking about a Mamba. You're not talking about a, I'm a, talking a, about a, a government <laughs> vehicle. You, red number plates, you will soon see them on the vehicle. On, on the, on the, and government... 1.2 billion. And that, of course, there are no taxes on that. If you add taxes on that, you, you, you are talking in 2 point something billion per car. You will see, again, you come and see a car of 100 million being driven, red number plate. And you wonder, and these belong, don't they belong to the same government? Don't they belong to the same country? Mm. Don't they pick money from the same consolidated fund? Who approves these different figures? Yes, because we've seen chikumis with the red number plates. So that is the challenge mm. where the th this budget is going to face. Distortions. Because you have no standard of goods and services you want to procure as a government. That your standards are everywhere. In fact, sometimes they say, oh, we are going to base ourselves on international standards. You are not international, you are Uganda. Mm. International standards are good, but if you can't afford them, please go low. Cut your cloth by its size. Mm. That's, that's what they tell us. Mm. I would have loved to drive a Mercedes-Benz, but if you don't have that money, mm. can I get the minimum to take me from point A to point B? Okay. That, that, that is it. That, that's, that's what you're looking out for. You want to facilitate. Because if you do that, mm. each and every person in your department is actually going to be facilitated. Mm. So lack of a standard in this country, a national standard for the goods and services, is what is going to affect this particular budget. And mm. I think the president needs to look at that. The Ministry of Finance also needs to look at that. Mm. 
If somebody is traveling abroad, mm. you know these tickets, you, you, a ticket. From here to Kenya, the tickets can, a ticket can range from $200 mm. to $1,000. 1000 dollars yeah. Mm. Why would you want to approve a ticket of $1,000 for the person mm. to, to, go, to just go to Nairobi? Same, same amount of time. Same, 40, same for, plane. Same plane, same amount of time. Same time. 45 minutes. In Tebe, Jomo Kenyatta International. And you're in Nairobi. If you don't put a standard, <laughs> then you'll have people, everybody wants to try to, to be in a business class. Mm. For 45 minutes. And, mm, and, and for me, mm. I just, just don't understand that, that you want to do that to, uh, for a country where you, are only, you have a budget of 44 trillion and your revenues are 25 trillion. You don't have enough money to cover the entire budget. You have less. But, but you want to spend... But you want to spend as mm. if you are a very rich person. Okay. F finally, Julius, you know, th this is what you do every day. You live it. And, and you know, um, a, a budget is the, uh, the bloodstream of, of any government. Oh, yeah. Uh, without the budget, then the rest of everything is, is just a waste of time. Those members of parliament wouldn't be there. Uh, nobody would actually <laughs> be anywhere they are. Uh, uh, finally, um, look at the camera and tell us, Esu, we did one. And how should we bless ourselves for the next year? Because we are here, by the grace of God. We live every day. And, and we... Uh, actually, all of us ask God for life every day <laughs> we want to be alive whether there will be food to do or no uh, but you, you can't say there's no food tomorrow so die today and somebody else uh, uh, no, 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 but let me be alive mm. i'll see what comes next week no it's there are good things in the budget mm. I, I think sometimes i think probably we, we are taken over by the, 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 the negative the negative part the challenges not negative but the challenges that we face i think there are good things like, like for example i said we have the parish development model mm. i think for me to gain the worker, to gain the kucharo. Let's mm. go to the villages and wait for this money and get prepared. Because I think for me, it's going to be a game changer if it is done, if it's done correctly. Mm. I mean, the, the other element is, is that Uganda will seem to be an island of peace. If, if you look at what other countries are going through, if I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be in, to belong to our neighbor in the north. Neither do I want to be in our neighbor, you know, in the east, really. I, I, I know I can live from here, I go to my home, I sleep, I wake up in the next, the, the next morning. Despite, of course, the challenge that I would, I'm not saying that, oh, everything is, everything is, is well, no. Uh, but at least there is that. We are looking forward to that. But I think for me, is, I'm telling you, Ghanans, please, that hospital there, health center, that primary school, that water point, does not belong to President M7, mm. neither the LC5 chairperson. Mm. It belongs to you. Sure. Make sure it functions sure. and demand accountability for it. Thank you. And if we don't do that, let me tell you, mm. the little money that we, we, we make as a nation is mm. going to be wasted. Thank so you. it's up to each and every responsibility mm. to monitor how resources are being used at that particular level. Well, thank you so much, Julius Mukunda from the Civil Society Budget Advocates Group. And um, our budget is coming on next week. Oh, uh, we're yes, just yes, counting yes, yes, yes. Uh, a few mm. days. But mm. tomorrow, His Excellency, the President, will be speaking to the nation uh, to give us a State of the Nation address. And uh, remember, it is a State of the Nation address, of course, that precedes um, the budget reading that will come on next week on Tuesday. Um, uh, tomorrow, mm. UBC TV will, of course, bring you live uh, the coverage that will be coming in from Kololo. And we just employ you to be a part of that. But just as uh, Julius says, here is where we are. We just need to take responsibility and, of course, demand for accountability mm. let's get back let's uh, um, uh, cause our leaders to account for each and everything that they actually do for us because they are our leaders and everything that they do is actually uh, for us we stop the conversation here for today and just wishing all the best for god and my country stay blessed shalom, shalom. live from ubc studios in kampala